That's a lot of beer. Belgium, baby. Ghent, Belgium. I love this city. It's my favorite town in Belgium. It's got everything. The bikes, the vibe, the beer. It's in the northern part of Belgium, the Flanders region. So they speak Dutch here about midway between Brussels and Bruges. And it's a university city, so it has that extra bit of energy. The question is, when you're here visiting, what to do with your day? This is the medieval heart of Ghent, the Patterson. And just think in the 1980s, it was overrun with thieves and prostitutes. Not really a place where you wanted to hang out. Now you do. In non-coronavirus times, it's full of tourists, bars and restaurants, so many of international options. And what remains are these beautiful 16th century buildings. And they're just lovely to look at, have a drink, and pass the evening. <laughs> favorite spots in Ghent, Café La Bath. Getting to Ghent is super easy. You can get flights into the Brussels airport, get up here by train, it's super accessible. I come up here every year for the bike races. Ghent's a university city, everybody's going around by bicycles, so it's very helpful to have one here. Now, a lot of times I'll bring a road bike with me too because there's some really good road bike riding in the Flanders area, just south of the city, you follow the canal down towards Odenard. It's great. Now, one of the things you need to have in this city is the Use It map. This thing is fun. It tells you all different sorts of kind of quirky history facts about the city, and I've been using it a lot lately. There it is use it it changed over the years it keeps getting better and better with each edition definitely get one of these maps that's the belfort or the belfry tower it's not the highest point in ghent that point is the fourth tower of ghent the book and torn the book tower up on university hill you can't get up there unless you're a university professor there's supposed to be a billiards table up there with an awesome view so spectacular so important that the german army used it in the second world war to survey the land now the belfry here is not a cathedral not a church as many think it's an actual watch tower and then in the olden days they would use it to watch over the city here on top is this beautiful golden dragon i don't know if you can see it up there but that's become the symbol of Ghent, and it's also a name of a beer. Look at this, the original dragon that used to be up on top. The one on top now is the third version. This guy used to protect the city documents. The city would put us important documents here in the tower and they thought with the dragon up on top of the tower that he would protect all the documents and the documents would be safe. I'm gonna go on top now to get the view. Are you ready for this? This is an amazing view. Here it is, look at that. Definitely worth the cost of a mission, eight euro for this amazing view. Up here at the top of the Belfry Tower in Ghent, you get a view of the medieval city. It helps you get a better understanding. Now this is a part of a series of belfries that dot the countryside in France and Belgium and listed on a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The bells are ringing, definitely get up here, hear the sounds. Take the sights in and enjoy Ghent from this particular view at the Belfort Tower. The St. Babo Cathedral. Now this place is famous for the adoration of the mystic lamb. That painting in there, the Ghent altarpiece done by Hubert and Jan van Eyck. And it was the first oil painting to gain global fame. And you can see why, because the details on that thing are amazing. The realism, it looks like a photograph. And that was all done with oil painting. Just think of that. Now that is also considered the most stolen piece of art in history. First stolen by Napoleon, then by the Nazis. And it also has a mysterious story about that 24th 
and missing panel. You saw all those panels in there. Here's a frame, an iron frame of what it looks like. In there, you saw those panels. Now, the Van Eycks like to do their oil paintings on panels, and the 24th panel, well, that's a replicate of the original one that has been stolen. It was in 1934, and two panels were stolen, John the Baptist and Just Judges. The Just Judges is the one that's still missing. John the Baptist was returned, and the search continues for the Just Judges, and the thief reportedly on his deathbed, he was about to confess where the painting was, where that 24th panel was, and then he died and was unable to confess. Now, a book came out recently, and the author suggests from his research that the panels buried nearby under the cobbles on a nearby street. In fact, most people in Ghent don't even care about the other 23 panels inside. They all want to know where is that 24th panel that went missing in 1934. For me, I need a snack because I'm getting absolutely hungry. Those are the famous Ghent sweets, but for me, it's a waffle, and I think it's ready. Ready? <laughs> Thank you, well. This is the Liège type waffle. It's sugary, and unlike in the U.S., you don't put syrup on it. It's already sweet enough. Mmm, it's hot too. Mmm, it's good. This is what I needed onwards to another spot. Check out this cool alleyway. This is called Graffiti Street. It's the unofficial name. It's what everybody knows it as. It has some other official name, but as you can see, it easily gets the name Graffiti Street. Here the city allows local artists to express themselves on the walls with the spray paint, and it looks pretty cool. You can always smell fresh spray paint. There's one artist that you may have heard of from Ghent. He creates these sort of cartoon characters, Boe the Warrior. He's my preferred graffiti artist, and he's now gone on to fame, and his art is everywhere around the world. Definitely when you're in Ghent, pass through this place, Graffiti Street, and check it out. coffee from one of my favorite spots in Ghent. I've been coming here for years or coffee and I see they changed the name they split it out it's called Ana Atento still owned by or coffee and it's a great place if you're in Ghent come here for a coffee uh, it tastes great also what's good about this place they always give you these dark chocolates I love it I always stop here a few times a day when I'm in Ghent I want to show you something else Check out this place, it's Vorarut. I always mispronounce it, Vorarut. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. It was built in the early 1900s. It's one of the preferred places I come to every time I'm in Ghent. And again, the Nazis took this place over, made it one of their headquarters when they were here in town in the 1940s during the Second World War. It fell into disrepair after that, and around the 1980s, they refurnished it, remodeled it, did everything. They added a theater out back, and they added a lovely terrace over on that, over there too. Beautiful terrace. Every time the sun is out, the Belgians pack that place. Inside, there's always great music. Sometimes there's a DJ, a big, big room where you can hang out, work on your computer, have a beer in the late afternoon or early morning, whatever your preference is. Have a coffee. Their coffee is not as great as or coffee. And in that theater out back, they get some cool concerts. I remember in 2007, one of my favorite bands, Wilco, played down there. So Verut, however you pronounce it, check it out when you're in Ghent. This is the Grasley, and this is as medieval as it comes. This beautiful canal used to be the old boat docks back in the Middle Ages, and these facades, they're beautiful. In the late 1800s, early 1900s, they were refurnished, re revitalized for the 1913 World's Fair, and they look great. And if you look over there, there's a facade that leans out. That's this old building, and it leans out on purpose. They designed it that way, so when they were hauling grains up and down to the top level, Level, it wouldn't slam against the front of the building. That's genius. People come out, set all along this canal, bring along some beer, bring along some drinks, and they'll even order pizza. Uber Eats will come and deliver here on the Grazole, and the party goes on 
all into the night. Now the bars and restaurants are all closed now, but when the coronavirus, the pandemic eases up, these will all be open so you can get a coffee, you can get a beer here and just enjoy the atmosphere. It's one of the coolest spots, definitely worth visiting. Get a six pack of Jupler, drink that until your heart's content. And if you don't know Jupler, that's a pills, it's similar to like a Budweiser in the United States. This is the place to be in Ghent. Finally, some beer, the Golden Drac. This is the Golden Dragon beer. And in Belgium, they have a glass for every type of beer. Unfortunately, in this Airbnb, I don't have the proper glasses and you can't go out to bars now, so I'm drinking at home. Delicious. Now, there are some good bars in Ghent. I can think of one I like to go to a lot, Marymont. Then there's another one over by the Grazalet. It's a little underground bar. I'll put a link to those bars down below. I'll figure out the name of that one. I think it's called The Spiker. So those are some cool bars here in Ghent. Now, Belgium isn't known for its great food. It has, Ghent has a beef stew that's pretty good. The college kids here, the university students, they love their spaghetti. I had a friend the other day tell me, get some spaghetti in Ghent. I'm thinking, why would I get spaghetti in Ghent? I come from Italy, the food is much better there. The spaghetti is definitely over the top, better than Bel Sorry to all the Belgians and to all the Ghent people. The spaghetti's better in Italy, not here in Belgium. But they say it's pretty good, so you can try it out. In the past, I've tried it out. They have bars that sell it for like five euro for a big plate of spaghetti. It's really, let's leave it out. And the other thing they do here is a stew, uh, excuse me, they got the beef stew, and the other thing they do is the soup. There are so many soup bars in Ghent. It's great to get a hot soup during the day. Now what you wanna do when you get here is rent a bike. I'll list the places where you can go rent a bike down below. Those are key for zipping around all different bars across city, getting to the different areas. As of this March, early spring 2021, the barn, the bike rental place below the barn is still closed, so you have to go over to the new library and there you can rent your bike. I just drink straight out of the bottle. Belgians, they would say that's a sin. Now the other thing, once you need to know when you're in the bar, there's some hand signals, and I've learned these over the years, you really don't need to know this, but you can really look like a local if you do this. The Belgians drink this Pils beer, this blonde beer, it's called a pension. It costs like one euro, 10 cents. If you wanna go like this in the bar, hey bartender, they know you want a pincha. And if you want two pinchas, you go like this, two pinches and you've ordered two. The other hand signal I know, because this is useful when the bars are loud, everybody's packed in there. Thankfully, hopefully when all the pandemic has passed, like that, that means duval. Two duvals, throw up the hand signals like that. Make sure you're not like calling out some rival gang. The duval beer, it's a good beer. I think it's like 10%. Those are the two hand signals I know when you're in the bar, back to the glass. Mm. So what's your plan? Do you have plans to come and visit Europe, to visit Belgium. Have you ever been to Ghent, this cool, medieval, magical city, a city of bikes, a city of university students, and a city of bars? Let me know in the comments down below. Now you know my thoughts on Ghent. <laughs>